everyone, and welcome to the Michael Voris Show, this edition of the Michael Voris Show. That's me. I'm Michael Voris. Uh, before we get going, just want to say today's show is sponsored by Real Estate for Life, realestateforlife.org. If you haven't heard about them or you haven't used them yet, please do. It's a tremendous Catholic organization. It works very simply. A portion of your uh, salesperson's revenue, the, the, the uh, commission, goes to a pro-life organization of your choosing, hopefully your choosing will be us, St. Michael's and Church Milton, but whoever you'd like to send it to, you direct your funds there. It doesn't cost you anything. The pro-life agents all agree in beforehand that a portion of their commission will be directed to that at your uh, discretion and your direction. So realestateforlife.org doesn't cost you anything and you get to supply and help the pro-life economy because boy, do we need it. All right, to today's topic, it is of course Lent and we want to talk about Lent and break it down for a little bit here. And I want to use an analogy. I want to use the analogy of, uh, of uh, being healthy and uh, what some people might call the gym culture. Now, first of all, there's tons of things wrong with the gym culture. Uh, there is this uh, emphasis on masculinity in response to the destruction of masculinity in the culture at large. Uh, but the same way that has gone to a massive extreme, labeling all masculinity toxic, there is in, a, in the gym culture, there's kind of that, uh, the, the sort of reaction to that, which has some good points to it, but there are a lot of bad points too. So I'm not talking about, I'm not glorifying the gym culture about anything, but I'm saying there are things about going to the gym that closely parallel the spiritual life. For example, one of the things you do when you go to the gym, if you want to have, uh, you know, a, a good build and, you know, have some muscular, you know, something about you, you don't have to be some weightlifter guy in the Olympics, just, you know, have, you know, a nice build is the philosophy is you go to the gym to rip your muscles to shreds, to tear them apart. And then when you leave the gym, you do other things, which is most of the things you need to do in order to build up your muscles. And, you know, when people say, oh, you know, I have a good build, how do you do that? Going to the gym is like sort of down on the list. The most important thing is sleep. Make sure you get seven or eight hours of sleep a day at the same time, a consistent sleep schedule. Number two, nutrition. You got to be eating right most of the time, all the time. Uh, you know, uh, number three on the list is going to the gym. And the fourth thing is supplements, thing, you know, various, uh, <laughs> one Simon Rafe here kids me about it because he's always sees me throwing these various powders into water and he goes, oh, that's space powder. And you're throwing in different, uh, uh, you know, different supplements like beta alanine and, and whatever. My point is on this whole list of trying to be healthy and maintain a healthy body is a major sacrifice and all kinds of things have to be done. That is a direct parallel to the spiritual life. There isn't just one thing you emphasize. It's a discipline. The reason I got all like into the gym and everything is because I got diagnosed a number of years back with type 2 diabetes. I probably ate my way to that because I loved sugar and sugar addict and uh and uh you know things are off the charts so the doc said you know you're going to go blind i'm going to cut your feet off uh or you can keep doing what you're doing and or you can get up and change your life i'm like door number two please so i had to kind of get into all of this and i've learned an awful lot about like you know trying to stay healthy and all of that so uh the one of the things you'll hear right away is it's not just going to the gym trying to be healthy physically is a lifestyle choice well, that's also true of the spiritual life, obviously more important, but again, I'm just trying to draw an analogy here. All of these things need to be done and they need to be done consistently. People screw up and mess up. Of course they do. You know, you have a cheat day and you, can, you don't have a cheat day, a planned cheat day in the spiritual life. That's called a sin. But over here, you know, you give it a little bit of a break and, uh, you know, in the, in the, physical health world, uh, you get a little bit of a break, but you have to maintain everything within the borders of this. So for example, you want to have a healthy physical lifestyle, which requires you going to bed at roughly the same time every night, because your day doesn't start when you wake up. Your day actually starts what time you went to bed the night before, what time you went to bed and how much sleep you got. That is a huge construct and a predictor of how the rest of your day is going to go. Every one of us, multiple times in our lives, have all had this, like, you just a bad night of sleep or you couldn't sleep or whatever the case was. The next day was just hell. All you could do is dream about getting back into your bed. Well, 
that there's a reason for that. That's the way the body works. In a fallen world where death is always pending, the body needs rest. It can't just go on forever. You'll never sleep in heaven, by the way. Remember that. When you close your eyes on in this life, you will never know sleep again. It's not part of the next life. Here, however, it's a key component. So you got to get to bed at a reasonable amount, reasonable time, sleep for seven, eight hours a night, uh, make sure you're eating right. Right depends on a lot of things and you know what's your current condition, all that. I don't want to get into all diet, nutrition advice and stuff. It's not my wheelhouse. But the point is, yeah, you got to eat sufficient protein. Uh, you got to you know, have uh, you know, the proper nutrients, minerals, all that sort of stuff. You got to do that. Then you go to the gym and you work on you know, your build, specifically building muscles at the gym, tearing them down. And then you do this. Now, what are the parallels here in the spiritual life, particularly this Lent? It's the same thing. The Holy Mother Church sets aside this season for us specifically to work on ourselves so that on the back end of it, we come out uh, soulfully better, like on the back end of the physical uh, lifestyle choices, we come out on the back end better. As you age, you have fewer health problems. You don't spend as many as much time in the hospital, all the money, all the, you know, you, you, you got to stay healthy. Well, you especially have to stay healthy spiritually. So Holy Mother Church, once a year, takes our heads and goes, pay attention to this. It's, she's like the coach, like you have a trainer or a coach sometimes in the gym world. Well, here you have a coach here as well. It's the Holy Spirit directing the church to say, okay, you're falling into bad habits again. And we all know this. Every single Catholic worth his weight in salt understands that by the time Lent rolls around, you're like, you know, I hate this. Can't stand it. You know, I, I, I want to do all those things, but I know I shouldn't. So good. Here's time for a kick in the pants and do what I need to do. Uh, and, that's, and that really is the whole goal of Lent. Uh, is to focus your attention on the things that you have let sort of come in and clutter up the spiritual life, things that you have not paid attention to sufficiently in the spiritual life. Uh, so when you're talking about minding the immaterial aspect of ourselves, which is the most important one, you're talking about approach it like the gym. What is the analogy? What is the seven or eight hours that I have to do the night before uh, in order to have a good day. Well, you know, prayer, meditation, when you're thinking about almsgiving, for example, yes, that can actually be giving of money, but there's lots of ways to give things. You can give time uh, to friends in distress. You can give time to, you know, I was talking with a very good friend uh, yesterday, you know, who said uh, he, he works at, uh, he does, he's part of the 40 days for life thing, but the numbers where he goes are very, very low. Uh, and quite often on his uh, shift, he's the only one out there. And he admitted to me, he hates it. He hates standing there by himself. He knows it's a good effort. He's, that's why he does it. But the sacrifice part of it is, uh, you, you know, annoying, bothersome to him. It's not his comfort zone. He takes the abuse when cars go by and flip him off and yell every, you know what, at him. Uh, he takes it, but he'd rather be somewhere else. Truth told, if you're in the gym, most of the time, you'd rather be somewhere else. You know, it, it, sometimes you'd rather be sitting in bed eating chocolate donuts and drinking a Slurpee watching your favorite movie. Uh, but you can't get out on the back end unless you go through this. So, and I don't even really think uh, most of the guys I know, you know, you get friendly with people, you're talking to in the gym. Most of the guys I know when I go to the gym, they don't, they don't actually enjoy the experience of being there. They do a little bit. They've gotten used to it, uh, but they do like, uh, obviously, the outcome. They feel better. Their brain's firing faster. All of those things that happen when you take care of your body. Same thing is true when you take care of your soul. It's aggravating. It's sacrifice. It's all of these things. I, I mean, we get this. Intuitively, we get this. There's even popular culture expressions about it. No pain, no gain. All of these things are, uh, are endemic to a good, healthy, Catholic, spiritual life. You have got to make sacrifices. You have got to say no to the things that are bad. You have got to say yes to the things that are good. And actually, when you sort of look at those two aspects of this, I think in some cases it's much harder to say yes to the things you don't want to do than it is to say no to the things that you, that you know you shouldn't do. 
Um, and, you know, look, like cheat days on this side, remember what St. Paul said. St. Paul, St. Paul getting run all over the empire, arrested, put in chains, shipwrecked, stoned to death, sneaked out of cities. That man has a, you know, a personal visitation from our blessed Lord on the road to Damascus, completely alters his life. And that man says the things I should do, I don't do, and the things that I do do, I shouldn't do. So don't feel discouraged. You know, thankfully, none of, you know, whatever we've given up for Lent and promised that we will do, Fortunately, if you screw up, it's not a sin. Thank God, it's not a sin. Uh, but if you uh, don't get discouraged, just you know, get up and dust yourself off and do it again. It's the same thing in you know in the gym world. You know, you, you blow off a day. Uh, don't blow off two days. Don't blow off three days in a row. But every now and then, there's just a, you know, it's like, ugh, you know, I just need a break. Okay, well, in this world, you don't make a decision to take a break from trying to get holy, but. As you're moving through the spiritual life, sometimes you just don't have as much energy uh, or maybe determination or anything about it. You're just frustrated. You know, you didn't enough sleep. Life is tough and blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, ugh. And, you know, you're, you're like, I know it's Lent, but yeah, I'm just going to take a bite of that chocolate cake. It's okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not encouraging you to do it. I'm saying if you do it, don't beat yourself up about it. Same thing about the physical life. See the parallels here? God has put us together, body and soul, slammed us together into this mysterious mess. Uh, and Lent and taking care of yourself physically have a great similarity with each other. That's it for this week's uh, Michael Voris show. I almost forgot the name of the show, which is kind of funny since I'm the show guy it's named after. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us every Wednesday and Friday right here on Church Militant. God love you. <laughs>